All right, welcome back, everybody. It's come down to this on the final game of the day. Liab versus Boom Esports. They're making it go all the way. What an absolute, honestly, brawl of a series it's been. We'll see how this third one turns out. Hey, everybody. Uh, I would like to take a moment to thank our wonderful sponsors before we get into talking about the pregame. It is CTBC Bank, China Airlines, Chungwa Telecom, and, of course, Caliber. Thank you for making the Pacific Championship Series possible this split. And Nightstar, what can you say? But Leo did it. They won a playoff game. They shut up the haters for sure. But can they take it all the way? Or will Boom Esports find that strength, bring it back, and figure out a way to close this one out moving on to the next round? As brilliant of a game that last game was, I do have to say blue side right now is just too powerful because of how much more freedom you do get with the ban phase that said i mean boom they lost game three on blue side in the previous day and same with hong kong attitude they were on blue side all three games so you know we'll see uh <laughs> blue side but, buff is uh it's not always as strong as it seems right yeah. i mean it definitely helped for Liab last game. That was their first blue side win all split, but mm -hmm. it it is really interesting. I think the draft is going to spell out quite a lot for us. Yeah, and part of that is, of course, the Zig's priority. Uh, I would assume Liab go ahead and ban it on the red side, and then it just comes down to can what kind of composition are you able to build up if you are on the side of Liab to then. You know, try and take this last game because I don't necessarily think that their draft in game one was all that bad. It was just they got small advantages. They weren't able to force it w with those small advantages. And uh, yeah. I think coming into this game, you know, maybe if they have a little bit more team fight added into their composition, that helps just tilt the edge ever so slightly against this boom composition, uh, boom team that's very skilled, but definitely have a lot of whoopsies moments when it comes to team play. Yeah, I think really just being able to close out has always been Boom's weakness. Now, we didn't see that in game number one. It was actually such a quick game. It was like 25, yeah. 26 minutes, and that like Can't that alone is like, oh, that's, not, that's not that fast. But yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I think you called it, you really nailed it in that last um, game where you were talking about how Boom tends to need some extra ingredient added by the enemy team they need <laughs> they need a mistake to happen and to have the red carpet rolled out for them to just walk mm -hmm. in and take the base the thing is they can force a lot of those errors but Liab kind of just took the fight to them took the coin flip mm -hmm. fight and you know they were the ones that were stronger that time around so boom they're going to have to shore up a little bit of the team fighting maybe the draft is going to change a little bit I do think you know Waco looked really good on the solution early on. It fell mm -hmm. off really hard. There's a reason it's not picked bot lane as much anymore. Uh, so sometimes the draft trickery can lock you into choices you may not like as the game goes on. And while it worked out really well in lane, it's a pick built to win lane, right? But Lucian, as a bot laner, is supposed to win lane, even more so into a control mage in that bottom lane. And... We saw the drawbacks as the game went through. It was just, uh -huh. there was such a range discrepancy between the Lucian and the Ziggs. So uh, it will change, of course, in this next game, as we shouldn't see either of those champions in the bottom lane. And uh, nope. I would assume we see probably Jinx Aphilios. Yeah, you know, I'd like to see the Jinx come back. It worked out really well. If the Thresh makes it through, keep in mind that was such a crucial uh, part of Boom's Game 1 victory here. You have to think Leah will remember mm -hmm. as they ban away the Varus, the Diana, and, of course, the Olaf. A couple of picks targeted Dodoy's way. A lot of junglers taken off the board. Right. Even the Zin banned out from Leab, so uh, Volibear really oh, the only one thresh left. Up. Okay, Thresh left available. There's got to be an insta-lock. I would assume that. Yeah, it. there we go. Yeah, yeah. Boom, boom, going back to game one strats. Now, what does Liab do here? So many junglers banned away. I really, I mean, the Volibear, it's kind of been their go-to. 
I'd love mm -hmm. to see a Viego just because Reset City is great. But to be fair, Dodoy has played a bit more of an engaged and supporting role this game, this series, I should say. Oh. They actually lock the Lucian themselves. My, oh. how the turntables, Nightstar. Okay. Uh, this is 90% not going into the bottom lane. No, uh, but it I, is still a flex. It is still a Kanji or a Xyliath yeah. champion. Um, this leaves the Aphilios up for Waco, so Boom get a very strong bot lane for themselves. Mm -hmm. They get the expected bot lane of Aphilios Thresh, and Ooh. I feel like if you're decided Liav, you probably just answer with something like Ash and Autolis. Adds a range, also adds a lot of catch potential. Right. And if this is the lock-in coming in from Ruby, you could very well see the Lucian go into the mid lane, which is pretty much a skill matchup. Or we could see still go into the hands of Kanji. I like the Jin pickup here. Mm -hmm. Jin or Ash plays virtually the same way. And it's really just playing to neutralize, yet still be able to maintain wave priority if they want to crash and make plays around that bottom side. However, what it does mean is more than likely, Dodoy won't get his hands on the Volibear as that should get targeted in the second phase. Yeah, there it goes. Uh, Lee Sin also banned away. So this jungle pool is getting really shallow right now. And uh, we'll see what ends up being the answer for both Holo and Dodoy. Are you ready? Are you ready for the pick? Here's the pick. All right, play it on me. Uh, no, 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 no. They tried that yes. once. It didn't work. It was paired Fiddle with Kiana. Sticks. I don't know about this one. Nightstar, you, uh, you, you're a crazy man. You're crazy. They need magic damage. <laughs> Where are you getting the magic damage? Nidalee, take a Nidalee. Anything. Fiddle oh, it's banned away. Damn. Okay. No, I don't want it. I don't, I don't, I, I don't like oh, it. It's Car a Karthus! You the know what? I'm down. Karthus! I'm oh down. my goodness. I love this. He doesn't even have to leave uh, the jungle to gank. It's great. I'm down. However, it does mean that you could go for something like a Graves, who's a little bit more aggressive when it comes to Whoa. approaching the Karthus. It's most likely going to be a... They're looking up blind it's picture. Viego. And Viego left they, they, through it, it, the entire it, it time. all the way through. I mean, somebody was going to get it. Definitely wild. And given how squishy this composition over on the side of Liab is, there's definitely a lot of issues when trying to deal with this Viego. And it looks like Ooh. they're just going to pile in full team fight. However, this is a great setup for yet another set pick. They certainly could, and I wouldn't put it past Kanji to put that out, but, you know, honestly, in just terms of pure damage, I really like what Boom's bringing out here. They get a lot of team fights, they get burst damage, they get resets. Mm -hmm. I, I like this draft, and, and Liab, you know, they kind of get forced into some interesting stuff. You can see Aiden just like, yeah, they're gonna go for it, the oh. Mal fight! Oh, I think we got ourselves a big old combo composition. Mal fight also works out pretty solidly in this composition because of how immobile that back line is. Ruby, Waco, not a whole lot of mobility. Pop has to be absolutely on point with these lanterns to bail that back line out. And the front line, well, Rocky Hollow, they're going to look to try and just explode that back line as fast as possible here. And once you get that first reset, it's kind of off to the races because of how squishy that Liab composition is. Mm -hmm. And I would say a lot is going to boil down to how well does Xyliath perform in this mid lane, in this very skill heavy matchup here. And that's going to dictate a lot of it because if he is starts losing out, starts getting 1v1 killed, then the Karthus is going to lose a lot of ground in his jungle. And then you're going to run into a lot of issues because this Karthus needs to be the big farm machine that he can be in order to provide that magic damage that they need in these team fights. Yeah, if he doesn't get off to a good start, Holo can really just run rampant and then it just goes reset after reset. Uh, Liab are going to have... Uh... A lot put on Xyliath in the laning phase. I think Kanji should be okay up top. Don and Aiden should be okay down bottom, although that has been more volatile than has been to be expected. But we'll keep an eye on that mid lane. And 
you know, Holo, this is, I, I think this is his first chance to really pilot the Viego. Typically, Alex has been the Viego player for this team, but Boom have committed to, to running Holo all three games today. We'll mm -hmm. see how well it works out for them in this third game. Always keeping an eye on Pop on that Thresh. His game one lanterns were absolutely godlike, and mm -hmm. he's going to be, uh, his team's going to be relying on him once again as Boom looked to try and close this out. It has all come down to this. In game number three, winner moves on, loser goes home. In the lower bracket of the PCS Summer Playoffs, who's going to take it? We're going to find out as we hit the rift for the last time tonight. And for the last time tonight, it's time to find out Welcome if Liab can find that magic that they found in game number two. Ooh, yes, there indeed. is. Oh all my right. God! So Pulling out all the stops. You know? Yeah, let's uh, let's let's start with talking about the most uh, interesting pick I think in this draft. Okay. The Karthus Dark Harvest. You want to run me through this one? It's a power farming pick, but um, mm -hmm. specifically, it's really just built to facilitate all your laners to go for that level six trade. Once Karthus gets level six, you're going to be able to add an extra 200 damage to these fights to help get that execute down. And really, it's just about this mid and perhaps this top lane. If Xyleth is able to move himself into that area as Kanji, he will. Say hello to Rocky, as we've kind of seen this entire time. Rocky, for the most part, has been able to get the better of Kanji in the 1v1. And this time around, Rocky gets a big teamfight champion to help facilitate him getting a snowball. Because we saw him oh, yeah. get snowballed in game two. He just wasn't able to bring the teamfight impact that we kind of hoped we would see. Yeah, I, I think uh, the Gwen pick, that, I think that was the first time he's actually lost on Gwen. Um, mm -hmm. it, it it wasn't like he couldn't get anything done. It's just, yeah, the team fighting follow-up just wasn't, wasn't quite there. There was a lot of good zone from Liab and some missteps on the opposite side. We will see the action getting uh, off to the races early here in the bottom lane. A lot of poke back and forth, but Waku and Pop on a very comfortable combination of champions. With this Aphelios and Thresh. Mm -hmm. And that's not too surprising here is kanji actually having the sustain advantage here is he's coming up on level two still has mm -hmm. one potion left to go he's played well weak side top this series i think it's definitely worth noting and uh, of course we want to keep an eye on that mid lane that skill matchup as you mentioned good job by xylianth dodging away from the scatter of the weak and uh, if there's ever going to be a lane for some solo kills i feel like this uh certainly could be it mm -hmm. Is it still there's... a solo kill if, if if there's a cart assault? Probably not, right? Probably. You do not. all the hard work, but the secure <laughs> makes all the difference. But as we see here, when it comes to corrupting potion versus Doran's ring starts, it's just a a battle between health bar and mana bar. Mana bar on Ruby and <laughs> health bar on Xylia. They're trading uh -oh. resources back and forth. Oh, Xyliath's going to be dead on this one. That's the solo kill for Ruby yeah. in the mid lane. Doesn't bode well for Liab. Certainly does not bode well there. Going to lose Scuttlecrab top side. Should be able to secure the bottom Scuttle, but actually Dodoy not having a whole lot of mana. Uh, okay, he is going to be able to pull Aiden over, so he won't miss out on that one. The big issue is, of course, dropping that first kill in that mid lane. That would be problematic, especially for Xyliath here. And now Xyliath, well, you still have... You can still kind of play, play the sustain ward because, thankfully, Ruby, what does he get off of that first blood? Not a whole lot. Tier and Amto. So it's still relatively even. It's just that extra tier that's gained by Ruby, so having more mana sustain. Oh, right. Whoop. Again, though, he is tanking a, a little bit of damage. Got to be able to dodge those Scout of the Weeks. Hold mm -hmm. on to the Relentless Pursuit for him. And, um, you know, once six happens, if he tanks a little bit too much, that Unleashed Power could become a problem. 
Meanwhile, yep. quiet game from the jungle. Solo really just matching the power farm game from Dodoy mm -hmm. as he looks to set up with this Viego. I mean, Viego definitely going to be a big issue with the team fights right now. Not so much of a problem for the team. And it is going to be all about this mid lane. I mean, Top has been doing really well. Kanji playing a great job, as you mentioned, with the sustain game. He's a little bit oom, so he will be backing away after this one. <laughs> but the fact that he's kept pace with uh, Rocky, I think, is a testament to his skill. Yeah, and the big thing here, I would say, is because Dodoy is put on a farming jungler and just a hard power farming jungler, it means that Ruby can just think very isolated. He doesn't have to think about where the jungler is. He's just looking for the 1v1 nonstop. And there's the scout of the week. Oh, Dodoy tries with the wall of pain, but Ruby is wise to it. Doesn't actually even need to expend the flash, and Xyliath does. Uh, so that is going to be it. Xylea is still level 5, and you know, there's the difference. Mm -hmm. XP. Boom, starting yep. out with the lead this game. Yep, and now we get to really see Boom kind of play to their individualistic style. Play for themselves. Don't have to worry about the jungler intervention here. Hollow, he's going to be fine farming things out too. He doesn't have to force plays. And... For the most part, that plays in favor for Boom. And for the Sia Liliab, mm -hmm. it's all about once you hit level 6, are you able to use those big alt cooldowns to your advantage and perhaps snowball the game from there. Yeah, that has been Boom game plan. Ooh, the hook in instant cleanse out from Dawn. Dodoy actually coming up through the lane here. Doesn't have Once Requiem again, just yet. Uh, Waco and Popper playing so safe. They didn't have vision of this, but they have to know. He's just playing for counter gank power here in the event that Diego does try and make a run because if you look at his jungle, he doesn't have any camps up available. And he's just looking yeah, it's to... It's very dangerous to go into the enemy yeah. jungle for it. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's not exactly... Um... Ooh, well, there's the okay, Cyclone. Uh... All right. Just using that to trade out a little bit. I mean, Kanji is a little bit low, but he's not really being denied anything here. So uh -huh. yeah, Rocky yeah. just using that off cooldown. Uh, cool down. Nice stun there, though. Leak onto a... Yeah, not going to follow through with the whole lot of anything. But you can see uh, the, the, the gravitational pull is trending towards mid lane this game. It is uh, <laughs> going to bring a lot of people to the party, you have to think. Yep. And... Ooh. Yeah. Hollow in Hollow's on, red on buff. Yeah. Level 6 onto Dodoy. It's going to spot this out. He's like, wait a minute. My red buff. Where did it go? A little bit of a fight. Oh, he oh. tries to get the smite off too early. Polo steals it away. Dodoy not having smite available. Just kind of has to give that one up. However, it is level 6, and that's the big point. Now he can start contributing to this map wherever he is. So, you know, uh, perhaps having more impact than something like a fall up there because he can gank all three lanes at the same time. I mean, there aren't a whole lot of champions that can do that. So I think Dodo, yeah, I think the Karthus kind of wins by default. Um, he will start off this Ocean Dragon, bringing Liev's bot lane down to help. And definitely good use of it with the timing. Waco and Pop had backed off. And yeah, there we go. That's something you can certainly do. Dodoy tanking through this, but the Lay Waste does a lot of damage. Smite on a little early for health, actually. And sort of a dangerous game, but nobody was there to contest. Meanwhile, up on the top side, uh, Holo is going to match with the Rift Herald. They're collapsing, Kanji's though. though. Kanji, oh, this is actually they're stuck in the choke. A really interesting play. Got to be careful, Kanji, as he is going to look to zone Rocky off. Rift Herald does not get reset. Kind of just gets leashed here, and Liab... They kind of muscle in to, to take this one. There's not going to be an answer from the side of yeah. Boom Esports as this yeah. will get finished off by Dodoy. No Cyclone available on Rocky, so they just have to go ahead and give he that one it. up. He spent it on the solo play that didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Aiden's going to get taken trouble. very low as the power gets unleashed right into his back. But meanwhile, Xyliath body blocking for his own support. Might give his life for it, though. It's Oh, there's the relentless oh, no. suit tag in and Holo. Ah. It's going to be a big calling, but Holo is able to get out. Can't quite get the full reset on the Heartbreaker, but does manage to find the kill. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, even though, yes, they are able to get that Rift Herald, the trade is just not worth it because Wako, he's just able to get solo plates in this bottom lane. He's about to get a tower all to himself here. 
Will be able to finish it off at a later date, but nine and a half minutes with that many plates taken down, that is massive for the AD carry of Boom. As we get to see the replay, a lot of damage tossed down onto Aiden and seeing Zyliath in trouble. He goes ahead, tosses his own body to save his mid laner. You know what? Yeah, I, I liked it. It was, uh, <laughs> it was Zyliath being like, Oh no, I'm caught. Aiden says, I'll be the hero. And then he almost dies. And Xyliad says, I got you. And then Aiden says, no, I got you. No, it was, it was, it was a, it was a love story for the ages, but you're right. The, the big, um, the big upshot of this for boom is that while everyone from Liab was focused on scaring uh, boom off the ripped Herald, there's just like plates on plates on plates for Waco in the solo game. Yeah. He got 640 gold from those plates. That's a lot of money. Transition uh -huh. straight into a this shield. This better bow. be a He's... serious value herald. <laughs> yeah, you definitely need just the full tower straight up here, but there's not a clear lane to really focus around. No, they might have had a moment to be able to like push top plates uh, for a sec while Rocky was backed away, but that window is already passed, and now there's going to be a setup here down bottom. The hook does go fishing and finds Aiden. Favorite. Teleport off the backside. There's the turn. They actually find some damage. It's going to be a 3v4, maybe a 3v5 right now. Everyone's as, uh, here. Xyliath comes in and Curtain Call ends a little prematurely. Yeah, Kanji even comes into the lane. And, and meanwhile, Dodoy is just kind of hovering his way through. He's moseying his way down. Yet. Yeah, he'll, he'll make it. That's the nice thing about Karthus, So You don't actually have to be in the lane to be effective. Oh, they're still looking. Well, there's the Cyclone, and they are going to get Aiden caught on the hook. Should be able to take him Should down here. And, oh, oh, they tried to collapse. That is going to be a really good play coming in for Kanji as he gets the bowling ball to knock down one Follows and here. then two. Don't Wait, worry, don't forward, power's unleashed on him. And uh, he goes very far forward, but the Requiem is going to fall down. Wako taken oh, low, taken oh. down by Dodoy in the aftermath. Liab coming up ahead after all. They find the margins and unfortunately, oh, that's the scout of the week. Dawn, he tried to get the execution play, but it's going to be Holo oh, no. that manages to take out the bot lane. And they just go a little too turn. deep for this one. And Holo is looking for resets. Wait. Found one, is it not? but no, it's not. Second. Oh dear. Kaji with the double kill, a huge turnaround. And Liam, they managed to even up the kill score. Gold. Still in favor for Boom, but ever so slight. It's only those extra four turret plates on this Aphilios that are making the difference here. And I mean, the side of Liab, when they see a play, they execute as a team. And that's exactly what happened there. The team play is just that much better. And Dodua, he understands. He just needs to add just a little bit more damage onto Wako to be able to finish him off with that ultimate. And then this one this is probably a little overzealous. Uh, but you know what? Oh dear, Don. <laughs> Don, he's... Kanji's like, this I is... got you, bro. Don't worry yeah. about it. Uh, Don's been able to get this team really in this position because of his aggressiveness. So, you know what? You take the good with the bad. That you do. Um, it really has just been every one of these games, full on action, 100% of the time, no hesitation. Boom have definitely been winning the plate war, I think it's fair to say. But uh, yeah, rare moments of, of chill, I would suppose, as we get, uh, I think for the first time tonight, an infernal rift. And for two teams that love nothing more than fighting, uh, that is an exciting prospect, Nightstar. It is incredibly exciting, especially when you have a Karthus on one side of the map. <laughs> Who's just looking to get that R button thrown mm. down as often as possible. Oh yeah. You know, I and on the flip side of course, there's also the Syndra who uh, the outplay button just becomes more and more <laughs> the skill button? Yeah. More and more skilled. Uh, the more Inferno Dragons you get. And that'll be a big 
cooldown to keep track of as well because at a certain point Syndra will just be able to flash onto the Karthus and just delete that champion with one combo and yeah. with that one combo like if you die at the start of the fight in a really bad spot as Karthus you lose the entire value of this champion. Yeah, but if you die in not a bad spot, uh, then you have tons of value still. Yeah. So it is really all about where you die, you know? Exactly. It's going to be Rift Herald started up by uh, Boom. And uh, last time Liab went in for the contest, but Boom have a much better inside track right now. This should go away. Uh, go the way of Boom, I should say, at the 15 minute mark, cresting over. All are going to be able to get the solo finish. I do appreciate what Riot did uh, when they designed Rift Herald. They give it a giant glowing weak spot that periodically uh, shows back up again. Really satisfies my video game senses, you know? <laughs> a very apparent weak spot. <laughs> always uh, always helpful for beginners as well. Mm -hmm. As Kanji will Ooh. peek in. He's pretty tanky right. though. He is. He can, he can just walk away. Um, Holo is not really strong enough to delete him just yet. This has not been like the super pop-off Viego games that we have seen occasionally, but Kanji's still being forced away from farm. And in fact, uh, both the Viego and the Syndra are here. Uh, they're gonna yeah. eyeball pushing down turret, but look at the difference in numbers down in the mid lane. I think this might be a siege on two fronts here. I think this is a really nice play coming in from Boom Esports and the fact that, well, we force him off the tower and we're able to save Rift Herald and we can just plop down oh, Rift Herald right here. And okay. so that's gonna be the charge for Shelly. They're not gonna full commit to it. Everyone's they're on the run. up from mid lane. Oh, yeah, that's going to be the curtain call. Them, uh, they're out of range. Not quite. Yeah, yeah they're not going to overforce nice that. Bit of a slow response, though, from Liab, I think. Oh, wow. They actually focused so hard on getting the kills that Shelly finished the tower. Yeah, and the nice part is because Shelly was there to finish off the tower, Hollow is able to obtain all that gold. So yeah, that's, th nice. that's, a, that's a really nice extra bit of cash infusion coming in for the jungler of boom and i mean he's pretty snowballed 210 has 104 cs not too bad especially it's keeping kind of keeping pace with you know the wukong and the lucian here so not that far behind is trailing the karthas but karthas just does unnatural things when it comes to clearing jungle <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't think we can really uh, we can really make the comparison on that front for sure. But yes, that that golden fusion really helps uh, push the Viego even further forward. And you know, this is a champion with just insane pop off potential. Holo himself is a player that is able to do that. You know, I think back to his Diana games, and that was a big part of the Boom strategy for team fighting. This is a champion that can operate in the same vein, perhaps a little bit more frequently. So. Now Don't the next be in play. trouble. One all right, minute. It's, keep your eye on Pop. It's all about those hooks. Pop searching. He's really, he's really looking because look at the follow-up. It's just absolute. Oh, there delicious. we go. And absolute they take delicious. down the Karthus. That's the kill participation, or rather the kill position you were talking about. Requiem comes in, uh, does not find any in. kills, and there we go. Numbers advantage. Decent return damage onto Ruby, but because he does have the teleport, he's just going to channel his recall. Reset here, teleport straight back, and yeah, Dodoy down. This is exactly the setup. You, you find the hook, and then you just immediately unload as the Syndra. There's really no counterplay as mm -hmm. Karthus. Well, Karthus is basically made of paper. That's one of the problems yeah. with this champion. As now they uh, will engage. throw down the Aphelios ultimate to open things up. Teleport incoming oh, teleport. back right now for Xylia. Counter engage. Rocky finds a Cyclone, but the team is there to follow up with him. That's going to be the hook. The curtain call opening up. Meanwhile, Aiden Force splash away and into the back line goes the Malphite. But Kanji doesn't get the deletion. And now that means uh, it is one for one traded, actually, I should say, as the top laners are both down. This is still a dragon fight. Yep. They pull it in. Actually finding pop on this here. one, but it's going to be Aiden taken out of the fight. Into this case, it's going to be Holo looking for resets. Finds one onto Dodoy. Holo will fall down, but a Ruby is going to unleash the power onto Xyliath. And well, I don't think anyone's strong enough to take the dragon just yet, but Dawn, the last man standing in this mid, going to have to be careful here as Wako's stepping up. 
Flacco doesn't have the Moonlight Vigil available, so he's not able to uh, lock Dawn down from long range. But really well done from Liad to find what they could. However, you can't ever get over aggressive uh, if you are boom because of the potential all a reset city coming in from Diego. As Rocky he kind of chooses a poor place to teleport. This all coming in from Jin. Unfortunately, Kanji dies, which gives Hollow that body to reset. Otherwise, they would have gotten the, the shutdown on him. Yeah. And just uh, Dodoy flashes forward, but you, you can't flash forward as a Karthus against the Viego. As we see two Viegos die on top, or two Karthus die on top of each other. Karthai? Yeah, the, Karthai. yeah, it's a little, it's a little confusing. Viego makes things get weird, uh, let's just say. But at the end of the day, despite losing the fight, Liab still secure the first Infernal. That's key. So they get at least something back for themselves. That's good. And they get that extra little bit of damage here, especially for a double 80 carry composition with a Karthus. This is massive. Uh, because Jin also just uses Inferno Soul so damn well. It's going to have Rapid Fire Cannon and uh -oh, Aiden's Aiden. probably just dead. Yeah, they didn't have to hit really a whole lot because, well, that one was kind of free. This might... He even uses... No, it's a little early for Baron. Yeah, I don't... I don't Aiden, I don't know what you were doing there, buddy. They're going to start Baron. Uh, oh my goodness, Boom just pulled the trigger. Aphilius uh, with Chakrams is going to be to shred this Baron down pretty well here. Now it's up to the side of we have to try and respond. They don't have calls up. Oh, they have good Crash damage. Immediately wreck me this range. one. Looking for it. They wanted to oh, try and take so it close. away, but it does get secured up. Meanwhile, Rocky into the back does find that cycle. Not on enough people here as they will find the right Rocky. And uh, it's going to be Boom getting out with just one down. Still, you have to favor the side of Boom in that trade. Huge value there. As and they didn't back away. That. Oh my lord, Dawn. Big stuns. Kanji, oh, he gets blown up by Holo. And he's got the reset. Oh, can you say Malphite Ultimate? And Nobody's going to be now. going anywhere near him. <laughs> no ult available, unfortunately, for yeah. this uh, stolen Malphite. However... This is where Boom turned it on last time around. They got Baron buff and they just straight up ended the game. We'll look for them to turn on the Jets here once more. And for the side of Liab, how do they stem the tide? Because you have to deal with a 6-1-5 and five Syndra pick. And again, if Dodoy... This is not great times for this card, this pick, because he can't ever approach the side of Boom. The only way he gets to die in a good spot is if Boom overextend into his team. Flashing forward is never going to do the trick at this point in time because of how fast they can just blow him up. Yeah, that's the trouble. Um, he does have a Zhonya's Hourglass, so he might be able to get into a slightly better position if his team is all going to follow up, but Liab, mm -hmm. you know, they're losing out on the gold game here. And you know, critically, they've not been able to find a single tower this game. We haven't mm -hmm. really talked about it because it's, the focus has really been about fights, but you can see even when they thought they had the siege down mid, boom, they wrap around. They didn't back away because they just have enough regen uh, to really stay in this one. And uh, now they're going for the siege and boom, they've got the win in their sights. They want to make it through. It was a bit of a scare in that game too as they lost out to Liab and well, still plenty of time for Liab to try and come back into this, but it is on them to try and make it happen. And good dodge out on the damage from Dodoy, but here we go, the counter engage, curtain call opened up. Everybody backing away from Boom though. Yeah, they just don't have the damage quite yet. They're oh, still going. The box. They find Aiden on this one. Do they have the damage to do it? Ruby will be able to take him down. Meanwhile, Rocky does get a big Cyclone on. Dodoy is going to fall right in the middle of it. It is a one for one trade as the Requiem will not find enough damage. Excuse me, one for two. One for two trade. But, uh, I mean, it's able to stem, uh, slow things down just a little bit here. They're able to recall. That should burn the rest of this Baron buff. At this, There's only 10 seconds left. So the purpose is served in just 
trying to stall the game out, but they do have to concede a lot of gold to do so here. As now it's going to be a 9k gold advantage for the side of Boom. This is getting pretty scary when it comes to gold advantages. And even though That's Dragon huge. is coming up in 40 seconds, Leah, not... Even if they do get positioning on this dragon, I don't favor their chances to actually secure it. Kanji needs like a like a miracle ult, uh, unstoppable into um, mm -hmm. honestly but, into like a pit play. I, I think they could pull it off, but he's got to uh, get a flank off. He does have teleport. Unfortunately, Liab have barely been able to ward their own jungle, let alone the river or the enemy jungle. And there is going to be a hook flying in for pop. There, no follow up available. The real trouble is is. Ruby just blows people up at this point. The moment yep. he hits that R, someone is dying, yep. and then it's it's Even hard. Kanji. You know, Liab, they have so much sitting gold in this game because they haven't been able to find any towers, and they're kind of getting starved a little bit here. Mm -hmm. is being completed. We do have Sorelda's Grudge now completed by Xylia. Doesn't have the Muramana, though, which is a large portion, but gets a little bit of utility from this item and dawn now on the rapid fire cannon gets extra range that will help him out but doesn't quite pack the massive punch quite oh. yet and hook and lands oh he does flash the box this time around oh. tries to go back in for a round two teleport in for xyliath and i think that's the end of it liab just not able to find an inside track they need to get deep wards if they want to make teleport flanks yeah, and now for the side of Liab, you're really just looking for either death pushes or just aggressive pickoffs. You can't go for these even man fights. It has to be odd man fights where you have the numbers advantage. Death rush. Yeah. Death push. Oh, no, oh, he's got the weak into the hook. Aiden's There's nothing dead. Aiden can do. They open up, reset, and uh, that, well... That just went uh, certainly not the way Liab wanted. Boom could be pretty happy that they can just clear the death brushes out without having to step anywhere near them. And that's spelling some doom and gloom here, Pyra. You know? Boom trying uh, to end the, the Liab boom. dream, but keep their own alive. I mean, Boom have had a long yeah. ride in these playoffs. Both their series have gone the distance. <laughs> They're just getting maximum play time here on stage that, here. that is the boom strategy this yeah. team really makes the most of their time on stage exactly. the games are drawn out uh, this one's only 27 minutes in kanji, oh, no, kanji. is going to oh, face check he's gonna well, opt into the fight though he is so low already and that's their main tank right now he is forced to flash away a little bit rough here don't lose the man but that was uh, a close oh, call and Don't. baron is up on the rift uh, can't lose anyone that's gonna be a baron for sure and that, aiden that could will be get sacrificed or maybe it'll even be the play. Yes, Dodoy going forward. The double kill coming in for Waka right now as the Requiem uh, will oh, land, wait. but not get a deletion. And that is going to prompt the Baron start. I I think it got canceled. I, I, don't, know right. how it, uh, I don't know how it got canceled, but I think it did. Either he channeled it right before he died, which... Of course, if you're channeling and then you die, then the channel does cancel, or if there's some sort of weird Viego let's see, interaction. Let's see it again. I, th I think that's what happened, but let's check it out. Yeah, so Kanji gets caught out here. Uh, and then Aiden decides to follow up face check. Says, all right, they got Kanji, but they can't possibly was... get me too. Yeah, yeah. So he goes and then in. And he goes in and... again. Uh, at that point, like, you're probably too far in as a Nautilus. And... Yeah, uh, he, he yeah. pressed all right before he died. He ends up misplaying that heavily. And, I mean, oh, they could have gotten two kills out of that. Yeah, they were definitely incredibly low there. And while Dodoy has been incredible when it comes to playmaking junglers, such as the Diana, the Volibear, the Olaf, champs that can get early access to backline champions and delete them. The scaling ones have been a bit more mixed bag. Yes, the Diana scales, but at the same time, she needs a little bit more of a punch. Oh, I think making. this is going to be it here. This nice. is our last chance dance for the side of Liab. They do open up with a kill under Ruby. That is clutch right now, but there's enough follow-up. 
for Boom to still equalize on the kills. They find one Aiden one. in this one. They will go ahead and take the down the bot inhibitor. Up. And are they going to keep going for this? They rotate over into the mid lane, just Lodoy looking to close this one out. Hook goes fishing, doesn't find the target it's looking for. Death timer still a little bit high for both dead players on the map. So it's a straight up 4v4 on two fronts. And the damage they're doing with Baron Empowered Minions is certainly looking good. No they just ults. need to play this one out. They're going to be the root walk. Oh, take oh. it out. Big shutdown for Dawn. And now they turn they can, on the heat they can once chase. again. Looking for Pop. He's going to flash the wall here. And they are going to follow on. I don't think Pop's getting away from this. But they do manage to split the difference. And finally will fall to Kanji. It buys Liab a bit of time. It buys some time. It definitely doesn't flip the game script by any means here as Boom are still the ones with a 10,000 gold lead. And with Dragon spawning in 10 seconds, Liab will most likely also be forced to concede. And Aiden, you, you gotta slow down, buddy. You're, They're gonna go for this. Okay. It's gonna be a dragon fight. They're the going to take it on they the dragon. The numbers advantage. And they're gonna go for it right now. But, it is gonna go pretty quickly. Uh -oh, in fact, look the at glass. Rocky, Rocky. Uh, around the side. Old. They're actually not fully focusing on it. And he's going to go into the Cyclone right now. They will get the smite off onto the Dragon, but will they survive? Out, though. Rocky goes golden. The tolling isn't gonna find the targets it was looking for. Rocky going in one more time. And Xyliab gets taken out of this one. Ruby would take down Dogoy. And that is not going to be nearly enough damage on the Requiem to find anybody but Rocky. That might be Rocky. enough for them to win, though. I think it might be Kanji chased away from the base right now as Holo and Ruby have him caught pincered as the scout of the week goes through. Kanji just trying to turn on a little bit of damage, but it's going to be absolutely nothing. And with the death timers, you have to think, boom, we're going to open this one up. Curtain call just to cut the wave. We'll be able to trim both waves here, but there's still super minions coming in, and I think... This is just where the story ends. The side of Liab, they were able to take the dragon, but unfortunately they weren't able to get out alive and that was the bigger deal. You can't defend the base, oh, even with Aiden's, that extra dragon. He's gone down again, and even though the rest of Liab are coming off of cooldown, this is looking like the end. The last game, the dream seemed to be alive, but Liab just couldn't quite do it. And with that wipe down, Boom Esports will take the series two to one and move on to the next round of playoffs. And Boom Esports in classic Boom fashion, they drag the game out, but this time they win the flip. They had a gold advantage the entire time. And this was one of those slowly but surely games for the side of boom and while liab were able to find picks find a couple of plays it just wasn't enough when dodoy is put on these scaling champions that don't have early playmaking or even mid-game playmaking this is a team that is going to struggle and unfortunately he was put on karthus and while you know it is very cool to be able to gank all three lanes with your ultimate if you die in the wrong spot you don't ever get to flash forward against Viego. Yeah, really just, it was so hard to fight against this death ball that Boom were pulling out, especially when someone just gets yoinked in on the fresh hook. But also, I don't think Aiden did a whole lot of favors for the team by trying for those engages, by getting caught out a number of times. Liab tried to play the death breast strat themselves, but at that point, Ruby Syndra was just so unbelievably fed. There wasn't much they could do because the scout of the week was just deleting people. I mean, Kanji mm -hmm. was getting shredded by the Syndra. I liked what Liab brought out, but you're right. It was going to be a tricky execution at the best of times. They couldn't quite pull it out, and they do end up falling one to two. But I, I do think I do think Liab should be proud of themselves for making it to this stage, for taking a game off Boom, and really proving mm -hmm. they do belong in the playoffs here in the PCS. But Boom, you know, they recouped the losses from day one. They they didn't change their style. They stayed true to form. You know, it, mm -hmm. no matter what, Boom is always Boom. And uh, it, it may be good boom, it may be bad boom, but it was certainly good enough boom to move on to the next round. So I'm excited to see what the future of this team is. Um, they confused the heck out of me, Nightstar. I'm not going to lie. It is hard to analyze this team. But luckily, that's not my job. That's your job. So <laughs> you want to break it down a little bit more while we got a bit of time? I mean, even a best of five. A boom. They're going to get... Uh, I cannot imagine a scenario where boom 3-0 a team. Because they just... They're not that clean of a team. 
Uh, it's just the reality of it, even when they are so far ahead. The game one was kind of a blip in the fact that conveniently there was a large minion wave in that bottom lane and that they had Baron and that Dodoy and Aiden got offered to them. Uh, and again, it's just one of those red carpet situations where everything kind of line up for you to just walk in and just finish the Nexus. However, we do get to see the gold and yeah, like this game wasn't ever close from a gold perspective. 10 uh, towers to zero. I mean, that that was a big part of the early game deficit, but yeah, Leah, they had fights. They just could never translate them into anything. And I think that mm -hmm. was that was kind of the nail in the coffin. Not to mention the fact that, yeah, Ruby just, you know, Ruby just got fed and uh, yeah, 80% kill participation, almost 5,000 gold up at the end. And oh, his Syndra. I mean, there's a reason this champion has such high prio right now. Give him a control mage that can 1v1 people. And yeah, that's he what he'll do. Like an assassin. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and it was a good early start. I mean, you know, the 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 tell I think was was it was the one v one, right? I mean, this was before mm -hmm. either jungler got involved. And yep. uh, you know, Xyliath, he steps up a little too far forward. He, he thinks he has maybe Dodoy to come back in, but unfortunately, he didn't have much he could do, and he gets outplayed. And I think that kind of set the tempo for the game. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Ruby's positioning is a little sus. That time, nah, he was on point. Yeah, and the reason why he could just play so aggressively was because, again, Dodoy wasn't on an early ganking jungler. He couldn't influence that mid lane and punish Ruby for... I mean, it, Ruby plays with a lot of hubris. That's just how he is. It's not going to change. Sometimes it's earned. Sometimes it's yeah. earned. Other times, maybe chill out yeah. a little bit. But, you know, you're right. The Boom are... Boom very much in all of their play styles and all their individual players. They just stick to what they like. They stick to the style they prefer, but they're still unpredictable because their style is unpredictable. Yeah, I mean, if you maybe they'll break it down in their interview, but sometimes I feel like they don't understand what they're doing. And if they don't understand, how can you, you know? Exactly. In the, in the wise words of uh, Cutie Pie, you know, it's sometimes that is very difficult to predict. And congratulations again to Boom. We will be throwing it to an interview, but first, a quick break.